The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Email, Easing Your Pain, Enhancing Your Gain by Debbie Mayo-Smith. Before we get started, I'll go over a few things so you know how to participate in today's event. You're listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You'll have the opportunity to submit questions to Debbie by typing them into the questions pane on the control panel. You may send your questions in at any time and we'll collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end. To give a brief introduction on today's presenter, Debbie is one of the most in-demand speakers and trainers in Australia and New Zealand and sits in the top 7% of speakers worldwide. A media columnist as well as best-selling author of 16 books, Debbie has sharpened the activity of millions worldwide through her presentations, quick tip newsletters, articles, books and videos. She is well loved for her entertaining, practical, plain talking how-tos and technology quick tips. Named Miss Productivity by the media, it's not just for her work. Debbie is also a mother of six children, including twins and triplets. Here is Debbie to show us how to free up our time by working with email, contacts and tasks. Welcome, Debbie. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm on, right, Kate? That's right, you are. Hello? You are. Yeah, okay, <laughs> thank you. There we go. All right, everyone. Oh, my gosh, it's so different sitting here talking to a screen. It feels like you're talking to yourself rather than you're presenting. But you know what? You're going to love our next oh, 45 minutes, an hour together because we're going to cover four pain points in email, and I've got 10 beautiful diamonds for you. This is going to save you heaps and heaps of time, and again, you're going to love them. So why don't we just go right in and look at our first problem. You know, I don't know about you, but oh my goodness, when I come in in the morning and open up that computer, I get hundreds and hundreds of emails and just stuff from all over the place. Are you suffering from too much email? Is that a problem? Well, guess what? I have a secret for you. You might not know that every single one of you, everyone has your very own personal inbox secretary. Someone that's waiting there, not to bring you coffee or an espresso, but waiting there to look at all your emails, to answer them, to forward them, to take care of everything. Who knows what I'm talking about? Some of you will, some of you will know this as I'm talking about rules, which is amazing, amazing feature in any email program you're on. Oh, I forgot to mention, please, we're going to launch, silly me, we're going to launch a poll just for a moment. I just would love to know what software you guys are all on. This is going to help me to understand and, and do a little better for you in, in explaining things. So the question is going to be, um, close poll to enable, okay, so you've got the poll going. So the poll is, do you have um, Outlook or Gmail? We are going to cover both Outlook and Gmail, and hopefully I'll remember to mention all the different versions where it's different. But anyway, now, coming back to rules, my goodness, it's a life changer. You know, you can have, how many times do you personally, with your hand and that little mouse, take an email and forward it on to the person who really handles it? How many times do you take something and say, darn, I don't need this, delete it, or drag it into a folder, or put all those, for example, newsletters into a folder? How about all those CCs you're getting? Anyway, you don't have to do this. You can have this entire situation automated for you. What am I talking about now? Again, rules. In Gmail, it's called filters. And thank you uh, to those of you who have answered the survey for me. I sent it out to the first 60 who registered, got about 35 replies, and I tallied it when I had about 20, 26, 27 come in. So a good swag of you, actually you're quite an intelligent group, a good swag are using rules, but there's rules and then there's rules. So what, I've, uh, what we're going to do today is instead of showing you heavenly-lated 
the images on, and screenshots, we're going to do everything live. And you will have the recording with the live screenshot. So let me show you, first of all, how can you create a rule? So now you get to see my email. Here we go. So rules are, if you're in Office 2007, it's going to, you won't have the ribbon. You'll have tools. And then it's a tool menu and rules. On 2010 through to 16, what you have is the home ribbon and rules is in this little section called move. I hope you're all looking at the screen and you'll see where my mouse is. So if you go to the drop down menu with rules, always start with manage rules and alerts. And we're going to, here we are under edit rules, we're going to create a new rule. Outlook is going to ask you five questions. We will cover Gmail after this, but first Outlook. So. Question number one is going to say, and we go down to starting from a blank rule. It says, okay, what would you like to, me to look at? Should I look at messages you receive or send? So let's just do an example, messages I receive. Next, you have a lovely selection when Outlook says, well, what do you want me to look for? Do you want me to look for importance? Do you want me to see if your name is or is not in the two category, two column? Do you want me to see if there's an attachment? Uh, are, let me look for specific words. Let's try this. So let's say you have a newsletter out and people are or want and have an inquiry about different things. So uh, you're profiling memory sticks. So you could type in memory stick or some people might write in and ask about what else are they called? USB or drives or could be flash drives. So this way, when you keep typing things in, it will look for the word memory or stick or flash drives or USB and so on that is in the subject or the body of the email. Next, it says, okay, when I find this, what do you want me to do with it? So here's the jewel, you know, move it to a folder, assign a category to it, uh, forward it onto someone. Again, a whole cornucopia of things. We're gonna say, let's just move it into a folder. Again, you click a specified folder, and what's really lovely, if you don't have, you can just say, okay, look, I want it to be in my, um, I'll call it my feedback folder. If you don't have a folder already, you can just create a new one then and there and tell it where to go. I'll just um, cancel that and just say, we'll put it in the PCOA folder. Next, it's going to say, are there any exceptions to this rule? So you could say, um, maybe except if it's coming from our email address or something, or if you're, let's say you're doing one for CCs, so you could say, anytime my name is in the CC, or you know, carbon copy, put it in my CC folder, except if it's coming from, uh, let's say the CEO's email address. So you could do exceptions or just leave it. And then next, which is really beautiful, is that when you go to turn on the rule, if you have heaps and heaps of emails in your folder, you can just click run this rule now on messages already in the inbox and we'll start putting them away. So that simply, guys, is the mechanics of how you create a rule. Now, you might think, oh, Debbie, I like this idea, but how can I tell it's working? How you can tell, at least, for example, let's say you have emails forwarding on to someone else. You can look in the sent items. But here you can tell if you have new emails, the folders turn bold with the number of new and unread emails next to it. See, there's 12 in Outlook, 7 in the inbox. I have three surveys and one new newsletter subscription. So that's rules. Now going on, I know what you're thinking. So you're thinking, Debbie, what about spam? It's such a pain in my tush. Well, guys, I apologize. I don't know if you can hear it. It's in the background, but my little chihuahua is in the room here and he's snoring like mad. I'm so sorry. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but Gremlin, the dog is snoring. So. Excuse the noise. So let me go back to spam. I just hope it's not disrupting you. So number one with spam, 
spam, unless you're with a very large IT company, I'm sorry, a, com a corporation where you have a large IT background, it's very hard to get spam away because the spammers, I'll show you when we go back into emails, with each email they'll change the email address. They might have things that are images instead of being able to pick up on words and so on. So again, spam is tough to get rid of because I'm sure you're getting getting a million and one emails over the course of you know, a few weeks from ASB or ANZ Bank wanting you to go in and check your account. Okay, what about marketing emails? If you're like me, gosh, I don't know how it's happened, but I've accumulated hundreds of subscriptions, probably 80% that I've never even put my two cents in for or signed up for. I just get every day heaps and heaps and heaps of emails that are promotional ones, you know, marketing emails, um, newsletters that I do want and those that I don't. Do you get that too? You know, you might still want them to glance your eye through, but you don't want them mixed in with your important emails. So are you ready? I've got a lovely, lovely idea for you to get rid of these promotional emails, or, or let's just say put them away. First of all, you could create a new folder called promotional emails or marketing emails. I call it inbound emails. And the second thing is you can create a rule. I call it unsubscribe. If we go here, if we look at manage rules and alerts, this is the best thing since sliced white bread. So basically, if you look here to the left, I've created a folder called inbound newsletters. And then I created a rule that said, look for the word unsubscribe. And you have to have variables because not all newsletters and, and promotional emails have the same thing. Unsubscribe or manage your subscription or change your preferences. So looking for those. And then I said, when it comes in, put it in my inbound newsletter folder, except if it's coming from our domain. Because again, we I kick out quite a lot of newsletters and different kinds of emails. So the minute that you do this, your life is going to change because here, take a look from today. If you see, I have in total 293 new emails that haven't been read, but look how it quarantined 52 of those promotional emails and put them in that folder, leaving my inbox with seven, hopefully, more important emails. If we go here into the inbound newsletters, so you see it's all promotional things. Let me just skim through it. Do you see? Over time, I might want to get rid of these. Well, probably do, but at least this way, it's not in with the important emails. And going back, let me just take a look. Um, for example, look, Westpac New Zealand, final notice. This is spam. So how can you tell? Do you see here it says it's coming from Westpac, but look at the email address. Or here's something. Um, why is this in my inbox? Well, it's in the inbox because, do you see, it doesn't have unsubscribe. It has to modify or cancel. So this is something that I could update the rule with. But anyway, isn't it utterly lovely? Inbound newsletters, promotional, marketing emails, call it anything you want, create an unsubscribe rule and move them out and quarantine them from your important emails. Okay, so that's the thing about rules with Outlook. Let's move into Gmail. In Gmail, there's two things that you can do uh, for managing your email better. The first thing is that you can create your own rules in, in Gmail, but it, it's actually called filters. So with filters, you could just go into settings, so you go Gmail, you know that little gear? You click the gear, it opens up settings, and then you have right in front of you filters and blocked addresses, and you just click create a new filter. It will open up the first of two dialog boxes for you. And by the way, Kate, if it's ready now, we can probably turn off the poll if it's ready, and hopefully we all can see the poll. So with the filter, um, you see it's not as robust as in Outlook. You can say, look who it's coming to, or subject, or look for these words. I have there an example website order form. Then you would click uh, at the bottom right, um, create filter with this search. And again, as you can see, not so robust. You can have it apply a label, 
And for those of you on Gmail, uh, a label is another is what Gmail calls folders. So Gmail doesn't take emails and move them off to the side like it does in Outlook, but you can choose to apply a label, which is, again, giving it a name. And you can then look at your different labels and see all the emails that are uh, created or, or allocated to that label. But what they do have that is utterly fantastic for those of you guys on Gmail is they have this thing called the priority inbox. And if you haven't set yours up yet, oh my goodness, you should set it up. Where you'll find it, it's under, again, the gear, settings, inbox, and it's called categories. And it will automatically split your emails up and there's actually five alternatives well, five things that you can have it uh, checked off. So social, we'll put everything from social media into social. All those promotional emails goes into promotional, updates, and then another one, if you take a look here on the side, is forums. Do you know Gmail has never, ever made a mistake yet, it, not once in all of my emails. Let's say you get one in and it's put it in, in priority but you really or primary and you really want it to go into promotions. You just click the email and it allows you to switch it from promotions to updates. You can actually take that email, drag it and drop it into updates and it won't make the mistake again. And then finally, just another little thing too, which is quite lovely, these settings will flow through to your phone apps, your Gmail phone app. So when you open up your Gmail phone, you'll see that it only is showing you primary. You'll have to go to the three little lines to the left for the drop down menu, and then you can click into social media or click into updates. I love this. I hope you do too. Now, moving on, this little slide I call having your cake and eating it too. And I know what you guys are thinking. Some of you are thinking this. Three things. Number one, some of you are thinking, oh, Debbie, I love the idea about rules, but oh my goodness, I'm, I'm just afraid. I'm afraid I'm going to miss an important email. And some of you are saying, oh, Debbie, you know, this idea of rules are, is okay, but you know, I don't get that many emails, so it doesn't really matter. It's not that important. Or some of you might be saying, Debbie, I have hundreds of folders. So the thought of creating rule where I have to go through all those folders looking for it to be bold with a little two or three next to it is enough to drive me absolutely insane. I can't use rules because I've got too many folders. Well, what do you think I'm going to say to that? Yes, of course, I've got an answer for you. In fact, I have two solutions for you. The first one are two little things that go hand in hand. I'm going to pair up something called, <coughs> excuse me for a second, <coughs> sorry. If I'm talking too fast, send it to Kate and she'll tell me. But anyway, going back, here's your cake and eat it to option number one, which is to uh, pair search folders with favorites. Is anyone scratching, and again, this is an Outlook, we'll cover Gmail in a second. So is anyone scratching their head and saying, oh my goodness, what on earth is a search folder? Well, it came in in Outlook 2003, and it's been there ever since. Basically, you know, you take your emails and you drag and you drop them and you put them in the folders that they belong in. I have a lot of folders here. Let me just minimize it. So, you know, again, you might have folders based on clients. You might have um, folders based on the different uh, categories of promotional items that they're doing with you. you. You're going to have folders on all different things. And let's say you need to find someone. Let's say you wanted to find all of your clients that have bought promotional pens from you. So you might go in here and do a search and look for pens. What search folders is, or should I say are, Search folders are virtual folders. It's a living, breathing search that never dies. So basically, and, and what it will do, whatever search criteria you give it, it will keep all of the emails in that folder, but it only shows them virtually. They'll still live in the folders they belong in, but you'll also get to see them and work with them. 
So for example here, I have a search folder that just looks for the word training and it's going to show me every single email that has the word training in it. And that's things that are in the sent items, in the inbox, and all the folders. And if you look down here, it's almost 3,700. How you create a search folder is you simply just right click it, new search folder, and what is built in are uh, a couple of things that are really wonderful. For example, uh, unread mail, mail from different people, organizing your mail, large, old. This, if any of you have, um, uh, what, if, what do I call it? A, a mailbox size limit and you get a little thing coming in from IT saying, whoops, you're over your mailbox limit. This is brilliant. I'll show it to you in a minute. Actually, I don't have one made. I'll make one. Let me just click now. This is how easy it is. I'm just going to click it and just click OK. Here we go. Whoops. It's automatically going through all the emails in my inbox and it's going to show all the ones that are larger. Now, let me just see. Do you see how it's showing huge, very large, and large? But anyway, guys, I digress. This is a great way of clearing out your inbox very, very quickly. Now, going back to uh, search folders. One of the built-in search folders is called Unread Mail. So you just create the search folder called Unread Mail. Oh, by the way, let me just show you too. If you wanted to create a custom one, let's say one looking for USB or one that's looking for consulting work or one that's looking for exhibition, all you have to do is just click on custom search and click choose. And this is how easy it is to do that custom folder. I'm going to do one called conference because that's what I am, a conference speaker, too. And I'm going to select criteria and basically just look for the words a conference. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of choices. And I'm going to say, look, show it to me in the subject or the body. Click OK, OK, and OK and see there it is. And it's just building it up quite quickly, 1,000, 1,500, and so on. But this is showing me all the ones that have the word conference. So search folders are wonderful. Okay, so now, just going back, our one-two punch, the knockout punch for having your cake and eating it too, is number one, you create your unread mail search folder, and number two is you right-click it, and one of the options is it says here, remove from favorites, because it's already up there. The option is going to be add to favorites. You might not, especially for people who have a lot of folders, if you take a look here, my goodness, um, you might have a lot of folders. And let's say you have something going on and you keep dragging and dragging and dragging it down to that little folder. So you can right click any folder and say, show in favorites. See, there's a PCOA. Then when you're done with it, you can again click it and say remove from favorites. So my number one secret for you with a lot of talking, put it in a nutshell is number one, go create a search folder. Let me close this. A search folder called unread mail, right click it, add it into your favorites, and then you could have your surrogate inbox. So in other words, if we look here, Instead of having to go, okay, here's five in my inbox, I have to go to 51 for newsletters, go down, I have to go to surveys for three, and inbound newsletters one, and all those other emails, by the way. Let's see, where is it? Let me ask you, do any of you do marketing newsletters? sending out catalogs, any kind of newsletters? Well, so do I. And when you send out that newsletter, do you get hammered with people that are out of office? Yep, so do I. So how wonderful is it to quarantine everybody? See, there's a piece of spam coming through. Um, everybody that's out of office into one folder because it doesn't matter whether they're out of office or not. Sorry about this. <laughs> Everyone that's out of, I should have turned that off, I'll know better next time. Everyone that's out of office, I don't care that they're out of office, you know, they're, they're just away when the newsletter goes on. So when I send out my marketing newsletters, I create my, I click on my out of office rule, and then when the newsletter is sent, I turn it off. Okay, so there's our number one thing. 
so search folders with favorites. Here's the very next um, little piece of having your cake and eating it too. What do you notice in this screenshot? I'll let you think to yourself for a second. What do you notice? Let me just see if the poll results are out. Um, no, I don't see any poll results. Okay, I'll just leave it. 81% um, are using Outlook 2016 or 2013 or the third one, which has dropped off, 2010. Um, Thank you. About 8% looking at using Outlook 2007 and about 8% on Gmail, 3% Mac Mail and nobody using Lotus Notes. Okay, thank you. Oh, by the way, guys on Mac, oh, I forgot. So anyone with Mac, <coughs> pardon me, rules are, it's on the home ribbon. So Mac has rules just like um, Outlook. So. You should, thank you, Kate. Now, everyone, do you notice that some of these emails are colored? Who noticed that? So that's a clever thing. These things are automatically colored when they come in. And in fact, it's not just your emails. You can have, instead of right-clicking something in your calendar and just assigning a color to it, the minute that you type in some words or something comes in uh, with specific words in it, you can have it automatically colored also. This is called conditional formatting. How great is that? Do you like it? If you're on Office 2007, it's called automatic formatting. So let's go back to our show and tell. What conditional formatting is, and let me just see if I go here to the inbox and let me go down see there's some that are red so conditional formatting where you're going to find it it's you go to the view menu view menu view settings and there it is you know everything is not in plain sight if you're on 2007 it's tools and it's going to be organizing your mail so just click conditional formatting and it's very easy you just create a new one so let me just think, I'll just create one that says seize the word stop press. So you just create add, give it a tile, the <laughs> title, I'll call it stop press, and then you select the font. It can be anything you want. I suggest not using light colors, you just want them to stand out. Let's do a Gaudi Stout and we'll make it um, purple and click OK and you can even make it a larger size and then you set the condition so we're going to search for the words stop press and we'll just leave it in this well I'll put it in the subject and the message body click OK OK and OK now where to go I don't know why there it is disappeared for a second just got out so do you see how it, it changes it automatically and it will do it retrospectively so if you had 17 emails already from a certain person or with certain words it will color it like that for you isn't that wonderful I just think this is great so this way for those of you who are who don't get that many emails or even if you do it's a fabulous way of having things stand out and again you can do it in your calendar do you see? I have meetings are purple, speaking engagements are, are uh, red, and so on. So let me just go back, and we're going to go back to calendar. There we go. Now, for those of you in Gmail, you know, again, Gmail doesn't have as many attributes. What you can do, though, to make things stick out is you can apply labels and with the labels, you might not have noticed that if you just hover your mouse over the tiny, tiny little square there, it will bring up a, a box that allows you to assign a label color to it. So that's a way in Gmail to allow some of your emails to pop out for you. Hope you like that one. So moving on, here we are with our second pain point, repetition. How many times do you repeat the same darn actions over and over and over and over again? Write the same response to somebody 
for example, how many times do you send out quotes or proposals and you have in the email, here's our quote, you know, thank you for the consideration. How many times do you put in the different terms and conditions you might have? How many times with EAs or PAs send someone an email with a map of where your offices are located? How many times do you take an email and, and forward it on to someone? How many times do you muck around or have to play with the settings of a table or settings in a Word document even? So again, problems I'm sure you all have. And do I have a solution for you? Well, I don't have one solution. There's two solutions. How do you like that? And the first one, no, again, I'm sorry, this is only in Office. And it's only for Office 2010 to 16. That's when it came in. It's something called Quick Step. A few of you are using it. And this should be a delight to everybody else who's learning about it now. So this is where Quick Steps live. When you're in your home ribbon, I mean, I, it wasn't until like 2000 and the beginning of 2015, and this came in in 2010, so five years, I personally ignored it. You know, it's just amazing everything that's there. What Quick Step does, it creates new items, it forwards items, you can even insert a little bit of text. It takes clicks away. So you might think, oh, well, Debbie, if I'm just creating a new email to my boss, that's not a big thing. I just hit Control N and that's new. And I put it as like CH and it will come up with Charles Vandergeen and, and it's all set. So my response is, well, that's, it might be a, you know, a second or two, but it's like little raindrops. When you start adding up all the little raindrops that, you, that you're saving every day, every week, every month, it adds up to a, full, a huge pool of water. So let me show you. For example, here's something. Um, <clears throat> this is one. I'll show you a couple of them that are already made, and then we'll start from scratch. So here's one. You can see it's going to forward it. So let's say uh, you were, well, not you aren't, but let's say someone has an EA and the CEO is always getting emails and invitations. So this could be that it takes any email, forwards it, and says, you know, already typed out, thank you for your invite. You have it email responded to the person and a carbon copy in to whomever you want it to be. I write an article every week for the New Zealand Herald. So instead of creating a new email, typing in the, who it's to and so on, let me just click that. Do you see how instantly a brand new email arrives, is made with the subject line and a, a bit of text put in? If you wanted something put away in a folder or deleted, again, you could do it. You can actually, here's Michael, you can actually create a task out of something. Just delete that again, and the original still is still there. So how you create a quick step, it's like this. Um, we'll just go, oh, sorry, let me go to the bottom. Here it is. Quick that is what I hit, I'm sorry. Quick step, and we're going to do a new quick step. Let me just show you a custom one. So let's give it a name. Let's call it, um, I'm going to go back to my memory sticks. So basically, we're going to choose an action. We're going to, let's just say, we're going to create a new email, a new message and we'll address it. You can address it to one person, two or three. Let's just do it one. Say okay. I just picked anyone in. Now guys, how many of you, you know we're so busy, we're so busy every day. Whoever takes the time to look at these little blue letters that are hyperlinked. Again, I never did, but there's gold here. If you click open show options, here's where it allows you to add a CC, a blind carbon copy, to put a subject line is. So we'll put in new order for memory sticks and then a text. And let's say Janice is the one that handles this. Janice, here's a new order. Please can you process? And then you don't need to put your signature or anything on it. There we go. So what do we have? If you click that open, look, it's already addressed to the person and 
your signature will be on it. So that's quick steps. Really wonderful. Quick steps. Now let's move on. Here we have number five, quick parts. And that came in in 2007 through to 2016. And it's in Word also. Um, what else did I want to say? And I'm, I'll show the Gmail counterpart in a minute. In Gmail, it's called, oh my gosh, it's, what is it called? I, I can't think of it. Canned responses, that's it. So I'll show that to you in a minute. So quick parts. And again, no one is using it. Okay, so for quick parts, what you have to do, quick parts is when you're writing something new. So you're not going to find it here. You'll only find quick parts when you see the insert menu. We have no insert menu here. If I hit reply, and let me pop up the message, you see there's now an insert menu. Here in the insert menu is where you're going to find quick parts. And what quick parts is, Quick steps, as we saw, were actions. You can create an email, you can forward an email, you can create a new task. It's movement. You can add a bit of text. What a quick part is, it allows you to create formatted text, uh, paragraphs, images, anything that you want, and it saves, as I mentioned, it saves the formatting. So, for example, if I wanted to do, here's the conference inquiry. The great thing is you can put in quick part on top of quick part on top of quick part. And it just, it's a fabulous, fabulous way to save a lot of time. You don't need to do drafts anymore. You don't need to do anything at all. And what's even better is if you go and save something instead of a quick part, when you save it as a quick part, you have to go, say, insert quick part. If you save it as an auto text down here, and I'll show you how in a second, it means that you can just type the shortcut and it will put it in there for you automatically. Now, let me just close this email. I'm going to open a new email and let me type in the word, uh, do you see, I can keep typing in the word where, but I'm going to stop. I'm just going to hit instead enter. Oops, I didn't do it fast enough. Let me, oh, there we go. So do you see it put in how to get something that was saved, how to get to our offices. So let me do another one, E-X-C-L-1. Did I remember? I don't remember it. Let me do the, uh, there it is. So look at that. And the formatting it saves. You can do beautiful, consistent quotes throughout the company. You can do incredible things. And I've just kept it saved as David highlighted so that I'll know to change it. How LinkedIn inquiries. And you see how I'm putting one on top of another? So I have another one saved as LinkedIn. That's thank you for the invitation. So this is quick parts auto text. Let's say you type something out, you want to save it. Highlight it. Insert menu, quick parts, and then you just save it to quick part gallery or you save it to auto text and give it a good acronym that you'll remember. There it is. I did EXCL instead of EXL. Or you say save selection to the quick part gallery. Would you like that? Pretty cool, I think. But guess what? It gets even better. I'm going to open up Word. We're going to go here to the insert menu and guess what? Would you know that the quick part and that auto text diamond is living here in that tiny little icon? Here we are. Do you see where we are? And I also have, um, so that's an auto text or how about, do you ever do mail merges? I do mail merges a lot. So I have my signature saved here in Word. So you can, you know, if you ever have trouble formatting, you can have beautiful formatted document the way that you like it, all kinds of headers, footers. Just highlight the whole thing and save it to quick parts. And that way you'll have it forever. So that's tip number five, which is quick parts. I hope you're enjoying this so far. And now just to show you the counterpart, I'm just trying to think, trying to think, in Mac, where you'll find pardon me, in Max, it's called um, Scrapbook, okay? Scrapbook in Max, 
and here in Gmail, where you're going to find it, it's when you pop open the new message at the very bottom, next to there's a little garbage can there, there's going to be a drop down arrow. If you click it, one thing that you can activate, it's called canned responses, but you have to activate it first. So again, we go into the gear, settings, lab, and then you just enable labs and then you check to allow canned responses. Okay, so there we are. Now we're going to move on to number six, which is our next pain point, which is following up on things. Oh my gosh. You know, your whole business in promotional products is trying to, you know, sell products to people, sell new uniforms, replacement corporate attire get them topped up with pens, make sure they don't forget about you when that sales manager is booking the next exhibition at his industry conference. What about remembering to call someone or remembering to <coughs> uh, set something up, remembering to answer an email? So there's three things and you know there's always a big debate, what should you use? So number one, who's a fan of flagging? Number one, I'm going to say I hate flagging and I never do it and I recommend you don't. The reason for flagging is that when you set a flag, even when you set, set a reminder, as you get more emails, that flagged email goes below the line, doesn't it? And it's out of sight, almost out of mind. And let's say you have 10 items that are flagged waiting for you to handle, that adds weight to your inbox. It's an extra 10 emails in there when you're looking at the number of emails in your inbox. So I don't like flags. The other thing is, let's say if it is a reminder and it pops up and you see the flagged item, you, if you've moved it to a different folder or if it's even flagged from sent items, you don't know where on earth that flagged email is living. It's lost. It's just flagged, but it's lost. Number two is calendar. So how many of you are using your calendar for your reminders? I'm sure a lot of you are. Now, the problem with using your calendar for your reminders is that um, if you're standalone, it's not a big thing. You know, uh, you're not going to look busy, but let's say you put down all your reminders and you just let it set it at 8 o'clock or 9 a.m. or 9.15. The problem is if someone's looking at your calendar, they're going to see you're busy unless you take the extra step of going and saying, setting it as being free. And also, you know, calendar is for meetings and appointments, that's it. And when you try to set something at the same time, if it conflicts with another appointment, it's going to let you know it just doesn't like it. So for me, I'm a fan of tasks and a good number of you are using tasks and th this is music to my ears. So a couple of things I'd like to say. First of all, um, I'm a big fan of anything that, let's say you need to send a proposal to someone, you need to respond to an email. Well, that's a different thing. I'm going to take that out. You need to pick up your dry cleaning. You need to get avocados. You need to call Tom Smith tomorrow. I'm a huge advocate of keeping a tiny little notebook with you. You know, the, the small little A, I don't know, whatever sizes they are that can fit in your pocket or your purse. The reason for that is twofold. Number one, is there anything more delicious than crossing something physically with your pen in your hand or pencil, crossing something off a to-do list. The immense joy and satisfaction you get out of that should not be under, um, what's not understated, but shouldn't you shouldn't um, underemphasize how grand that feels. The second thing about it is that if you put too many calendar reminders or if you do too many tasks, what does it feel like when you come in in the morning and you might see there's 20 tasks to do and you've got 40 emails. It's completely, completely overwhelming. That's why I think, A, that things that you can record on paper and, and the thing is when you have a wee little book with you, you can be religious about it. You'll always have it with you in your purse, in your pocket, number one. The second thing is that on, on instead of using your calendar to use tasks because it's really, really marvelous. Let me show you why. Oops. Sorry about that, let me just go here. So the reason is that your tasks can, here we are, can remind you.
when you set a task, it can it stays here in the little um, reminder window. Don't yell at me, God. Don't think I'm two-faced. Look, here I have three weeks overdue, 13 days overdue, and so on. Yes, I have not been attending to all my tasks, but they will stay there until I do take care of them. Okay, so here are the tasks of, that you have for following up. So that's a lovely thing. It reminds you. So going into tasks, and let me just show you a new task. There's so many things you can do with it. Number one, you create the subject line, and then you can set a reminder for it. So here we are. Let's, I'll, let's say you need to um, follow up on a proposal with the um, manufacturing uh, association for, the, for their, uh, their branding, the branding of their, I don't know, whatever. So you've got that, and it's going to remind you on June, 7, on June 15th. Then you can close it and completely forget about it. It's wonderful. So that's one thing. So you can create tasks. You can mark them. You can assign tasks to people. So if you're working with someone on a project, you can assign them a task or a committee. Um, you can also al allocate. You can also say, look, market as being completed and progress deferred. You could put what kind of a priority it is, what percentage uh, completed it is, and really work on projects. There's a details tab where you can actually put more um, intricate information such as billing information, mileage if you have travel, the number of hours. So tasks are, are really wonderful. You can also create a recurring tasks. So let me just see, why is this not showing recurring? I want, why isn't, wonder why it's not letting me, normally it will let me do a recurring task. Anyway, I don't know, task recurring. Let me try this again. New task, there we go. I don't know what it was. So you can create a recurrence. So that, see, isn't it good when things happen to people? <laughs> it's, it's like, oh my God, she's supposed to be the, the expert here. She can't even do a recurring task. But anyway, look how you can do a monthly one. So this, let's say you need to, I mean, do you know how brilliant this is for business development? Oh my goodness. Let's say you have a client that you know exhibits every year. So you could do a yearly follow-up or you can have one monthly and do it um, on the 30th of every 10 months when it's time for them to order their promotional impact items. Let's say you have clients that do um, corporate clothing. So maybe you need, a, this is just to aid you, not instead, but let's say you wanted to uh, have a call with them. You could do a weekly call every 12 weeks just to give them a call and have a little schmooze. So again, wonderful, wonderful things with tasks. It's brilliant for planning your business, for making sure that uh, you don't miss opportunities, and for following up on things. That's why, for me, I love tasks tremendously. Okay. Now, oh, the other thing, too, about tasks is you can view it as in other places in different ways. Um, so here we have change view. So active, things that are overdue whom it's assigned to, things that are, that are due today, next seven days, and so on. So there we go with tasks. Now let's go back into the next thing. Pardon me, I just have to cough for a second. <coughs> and I might take a sip of water too. But let me let you dwell on this. I mean, who wouldn't want to communicate faster and smarter? There we go. Now, communicating faster and, and smarter. This is our fourth problem. I hope that you guys will agree with me that database, your database is your gold mine, and that um, you know, by having as much information in Outlook or in Gmail that you work with, or in Macs, you know, that you work with all the time, it's wonderful to have information there, and you can do absolute magic with contacts. So here's the first thing, and this is a wonderful, wonderful tip. You know, whoever said that, you know, the only thing you can do is take an email and drag it and put it away into a folder. Let's say you get a new email in from someone and you want to turn that person into a contact. Or how about this? What do you do when you send out proposals? 
what I personally do religiously is that whenever I send one out, I put my name in blind carbon copy. The reason for that is that you might say, okay, Debbie, um, I won't forget about it, but I, I always forget about it because I email, do a lot of emails at once, is that when that proposal goes out, I want to make sure that I get an answer. And you know how terrible people are today at answering emails or following up on things. So let me show you drag and drop and the people pane. So going back into emails, no, here, here's tasks. Um, here we go. I don't know if I want to really show you this. Maybe I'll show you this one. Here's, um, so this was from Debbie and I sent it. So you can see here's a proposal that I sent to Joss, who's the office manager of the Rotorua Chamber of Commerce. So instead of just letting it sit there and sit there and, and forget about it, what happens when the task pops up that day? You know, it, it's going to be in my window, but here it is. I'll say, oh my goodness, you know, I have not heard back from Joss. What's the problem? So you can take these tasks, drag and drop it back into your email. Take a look at that. Get rid of that tasky stuff. You'll have your original email there and, and you could say, Joss, Joss, did you get my proposal? Haven't heard back. Do you see how easy it was to change it back? Oh, forget about the spelling. But you see how easy it was to take that task and turn it back into an email? Or to drag and drop an email and turn it into a task? But anyway, the point I'd like to um, cover here is let me just find with um, Leisha. Let's see. So here's an email. This is probably not going to work because I think it's a, I think this might be an image. Yeah, it's an image, so I can't drag and drop that. I should have had this ready. Let me just, here, Jeanette, let me just see. Here's Jeanette. There we go. Okay, so if I take an email from Jeanette, drag and drop it into my contacts, it creates a brand new contact from Jeanette with her email address in it and her full name. Now, where you go to genius statuses, it won't take images, but look, you can drag and drop. She is the engagement coordinator, co la, coordinator from uh, the Tauranga Chamber of Commerce. Let me just grab that, put it under, there it is, web address. Her phone number is, do you see how you can drag and drop and then you can save her to your contacts. Um, just to show you this very quickly, of course, it still has the original email in there. To get rid of it, you just delete it. But how wonderful is that little drag and drop? Now, the wonderful thing is, let me just find something here from me just to show you very, very quickly. Here we go. Oh, I think I... Was... Okay. So what happens is when you have added people onto your contacts, you might not have noticed there's a little, little gray line. Do you see my mouse? Little gray line at the bottom of your email. If you shoot that up, it should work. Oops. But it's not working. Debbie speaks. Let me just, I was having a little trouble with this today and here we go. Let me see if it, oh, there it's working with that email address. I didn't have my Debbie Speaks email address in it. Take a look at this. It will show you all of the emails that you've had with that person. Let's see if it's going to show. There's the one that shows with the attachments and so on. Isn't that wonderful? This is called the People Pane, and it will only show uh, the activity you've had with someone that is in your contacts. Where you're going to find the People Pane is in the folder. No, it's in the view menu, sorry about that, view, and here we have people pane, and you just need to have it turned on. If you don't see it, it might be off, or if you're in a large company, you need, if it's not there, you just need to find out from the IT department. And I believe this is in 2013 and 16, might be 2010 too. Now going back from, <coughs> pardon me, drag and drop, um, in Gmail, you guys know that when you put someone's name in the search bar, you'll find anything that has that person's name in it. You might not know that when you're on an email, if you hover over someone's picture and over there, that's my beautiful daughter, Sammy, 
lover to pieces. So there's Samantha. And if you just click on that little thing that says emails, it will show you all the emails you have had from that person. So that's kind of the, the best thing you can do with your people pane, so to speak, in Gmail. Okay. Now moving on to eight, and there's still these three diamonds left for you that you're going to love, love, love. Okay, so again, thanks for answering the survey. Two-thirds are using your contacts. This is a black mark. No, it should be red mark, right? This is a red mark because every single person should be using their contacts. They're completely valuable. Number two is I, this, this is the first time ever in all the years I've been doing all the work is showing, I'm sorry, all doing this work is you, this group has the highest number of people using categories ever. Normally I'll have, even from executive EAs and PAs, normally only three or four people that use categories. So hooray to you. So I want to show a couple of magical things that you can do with contacts and with categories. So let's go into contacts. Now, you know, a lot of you might have contacts showing a different way. So uh, if we go to the view menu, you know, change view, you might be looking at seeing it just as people this way, or you might, most people see it this way as little mini business cards. But again, another way you can view things wonderfully is by a list, and you can also have your list. Um, sorted or arranged by categories. Now I know what you're saying. Categories? What's this? If we click on some, let me just click on a person here. And if you go here, this is categories. And if I click on all categories, this is how you can create a new one. Now the thing is that um, Microsoft comes with just plain color categories. So you will won't see anything like this. You're just going to see things that are blue, green, per it's going to say pink, um, maroon. I don't know how you Australians say maroon, but I say maroon. I heard it sounds very different in Queensland. Green, you know, and uh, so gold and so on. And that to me is completely useless. Who on earth can remember it? So what you can do is just create a new one and you just write your name in. The color is secondary give it any color you want, and then you just click Save. And the beautiful thing is, and I'll just close this, is that people can have, let's, I will click Kent again, so people can have a um, multitude of categories. Do you see how I've given um, Kent here? Hope you're logged on, Kent. Hi. He can have four different categories. This means that when I look at, or when you look at your emails in categories, and let me just close these up, that that Kent is going to be shown four different places. So this is a great way of, of substituting and getting rid of the need to do things blind carbon copy and CCing. It's a great way of, of doing, um, what's the right word for it? Not direct marking, but doing, um, making sure that, let's say you wanted to do an email or, or speak to all of your group of of office managers versus let's say you want to talk to everyone that does procurement or you need to talk to everybody that's in the um, uh, association industry. Anything at all that you want, you can grab them here in Outlook Contacts. So just going back, again, categories are great and I will show you why they're great in one minute. Just going back, um, you know, again, what can you do with categories? You can do add in the different industries that your clients are in. You can do the different um, areas of business that you do with them. Are they a product or are they a consulting client? Are what do what did they do with your promotional products? Did they exhibit? Did they do a product launch? Is it work uniforms? Is it corporate apparel? Probably the same thing, right? You're saying, Debbie, you duplicated that. Office supplies, caps. There's my memory sticks again. <laughs> Are they an office manager? Are they sales? You know, again, you can do anything at all that's relevant to you. Now, I'll just show Gmail. <coughs> and it's, it's the same thing in contacts in 
Mac, it's called groups, just like you have you can create a group in uh, Gmail. All you do is highlight your contacts and you just click the three little headed button there. <laughs> Let me highlight it. Three little heads. A drop down arrow comes in and that's where you can just write something in and click create new. And then you can, I think, then if you click on someone independently, you can just add that person to that category. So that's categories. And what is so great about these categories? Moving on is that if you ever wanted to, you could do a personalized email merge. So here we are, personalized email merge. Let me just show you this live and not very many of you are doing it. So this is why I thank you again to the guinea pigs here who have answered my survey. These were the first few. All I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight from the top to the bottom this is my category, APPA, and in the home menu, you might not have noticed that you have a mail merge. So we're going to mail only the people we've selected. We're going to say only fields in current view, although I think Outlook ignores that. New document, leave it at form letters, and we're going to go to an email. And I'm going to say, thank you for answering the survey. Okay. When I click OK, it's going to initialize and open up Word, and we're in the mailings ribbon. I'll just go back to start a mail merge and show you the wizard on the right. And for some reason, see, it's put us in three. From 2003 to this day, it's still, even though you start with email, it defaults back to letters. So here we go, letters. We've already selected our recipients. Now I'm going to write it. So, I'm sorry. Oh, just to show you, see how it has everyone in? And if you wanted to, you could say, I've changed my mind. I don't want to send it to everyone. I'm just going to send it to a few people. Or you select everyone. Click OK. I'm going to say first name. Thank you. And I'll put your company name in here. Company for answering the survey. And then I'll just put, remember, quick parts. So we've got quick parts. I'm going to put in my signature. We'll go back to mailings. And then we're going to do the very next thing. We've written our email. Now we're going to preview. So do you see how it has Philippe, Jane, Scott, Tina? And then finally, we're going to do the email. Thank you for answering the survey. And I'm going to hit go. Here we are. Do you see there's eight left in the sent out box? Oh, they're being they're going as we speak. Thank you. Do you see how lovely that is? Look how quick that was. The only downside to doing um, the personal email merge is you can't add attachments. And now, my goodness, I'm going over time. I think I'm sorry. The last one, and by the way, all of you on on Gmail, if you're using Google Drive, you can get a Chrome add-on. There's several of them. An example is called Yet Another Mail Merge, where through Gmail and using Google Drive, you can do a personalized email merge too. And our last one is export any folder. Do you ever have an instance where, and I'm sorry I'm going over time, oh my goodness, I just talk too much, but anyway, export any folder. Do you ever have RSVPs that come in and or orders that come in and you put them in a folder or you've put job applicants in a folder or you've had a newsletter go out and you've had a contest or people do again people asking for more information and they've gone into one folder <coughs> pardon me you might not know that you can take any folder any folder at all and export it into an um, an Excel spreadsheet so for example, let me just find, um, where's a good folder? Um, here. I did a little survey to my database asking if people were interested in doing webinars or no. So here's this folder, and as you can see, there's 182 responses in it. Look how fast I can create a, a um, spreadsheet out of this. So you do File, Options, 
down here advanced and we're going to export to a folder and it says what do you want to do? I'm going to export it to a file. Next. Yep. Leave it as comma separated variable. Yep. We want no webinar. No webinar. And what where should I put it? I'll just put it under here, temp, and we're going to call it test, testing. And then next, yep, mapping custom fields is normally uh, more important when you're bringing, let's say you're bringing a database of contacts into Outlook contacts. And basically it just says, look, when you see name, put it next to name. When you see um, uh, address, put it next to address. So it's just saying put matching the different columns. Oh no, I didn't do it. I Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I'll do it very quickly. I'll show you how fast it is. File, options, I um, advanced, and we're going to do export, export to a file, comma separated variable, yup, no webinar, and testing CSV under, yup, finish it off. There we go. Boom, 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 182 emails. If we open up the folder, here's temp, and here we go testing. So the subject line is there. The whole body, the body is going to be very large uh, because, you know, it's the entire body of the email. But the gold is here. Look, you have, oh. Let me just fix this up for you. I'm going to do row height, 20, okay, oops. Sorry guys, I hate doing things live, 20. So would you see Julie, Coffee, and here's their email address. Isn't that amazing? Now, just a little quickie, I've got to throw this in, don't get mad. If you wanted to do a personalized email merge, you can. You might not know under the data menu in Excel that you have text to columns and you could just say, I want you to find any space and separate that out and there you go. Look at that. So going back to our PowerPoint, let me bring us back, export any folders. That was number 10. So just in summing up, Guys, I'm going to be a little bit of a crass marketer here, and I'm just going to say, you know, I'm happy to come live. Oh, my goodness. If, if you're ever uh, going to any other association conferences or if you're having an internal sales or board meeting, I can really help on sales, on communication, productivity, work-life balance. And I also, I come to Australia all the time. I live in Auckland and my son's a pilot so I can come cheaply. <laughs> and uh, small in-house groups are my pleasure. And then finally, for DIY, I have a, a free newsletter. I'll be emailing everyone and ask you if you'd like to join the free newsletter of quick tips. And I have a boot camp every week with tips that come out that show you video how to do it. And then finally, ebooks. Uh, anyway, that's it, Kate. No more sales pitch. Thank you, everyone. Sorry I've gone over time, and it's over to you, Kate. Thank you so much, Debbie. That was great. And some huge um, time saving tips there. And I'm sure we'll all go back to our emails and have a play around and install some of these features. Um, there aren't any questions so far. If anyone has a question, if you could type it in really quickly. Um, in the meantime, if you do have any questions for Debbie afterwards, her email address is on the bottom of the screen there. Tomorrow you'll receive a follow-up email with a link to view the recording and also to Debbie's slides. Uh, so no questions have come through, so I think we'll leave it there. And on behalf of Debbie and Appa, thank you everybody for joining us today and have a great afternoon.